Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to get basic multi-taxing experience application running on your computer as well as on a multi-taxing display. To begin, we first need to make sure that we are running a 64-bit operating system as 32-bit versions are not supported. Cornerstone supports Linux, OS X, and of course Windows. More information about this can be found at the Cornerstone website. I'm currently running Windows 7 for this video. For this video we need a multi-taxing display. I will be using an MT553 UTB model. Next, you'll need to have your application PC connected to the display. The display is currently used DVI input for video. You also need to have an Ethernet cable connected between your computer and the display. Touch data is commuted over Ethernet. Lastly, you, you will need to download Cornerstone. So here on my desktop, I'm going to open up Microsoft Paint and show you the, our system diagram of our display and computer connected together. So we have our multi touching display and then we have our application PC. Then we'll use red color to denote DVI video input to the display. And then we'll use blue for Ethernet. So touch data is sent over Ethernet. So this is a pretty simple system diagram for a single display setup with an application PC. So let's check that our operating system is 64-bit. So we'll go to computer, or we'll right click, go to properties, and then we see that I'm running a 64-bit operating system. So we're going to go, so let's go download Cornerstone. So let's open up a web browser. So we'll type in and Google corner stone multi taxing. There we go. So in order to download Cornerstone, you need to have a user account. So once you have made your user account, go to the download section, and then go to Windows, and then there are two versions of Cornerstone you can download: the runtime or the SDK. So runtime is designed to run your Cornerstone applications while the SDK is for developing Cornerstone applications. So I'll download both versions because it's really easy to run experience from, from either or. So while these are downloading, I'm going to download a sample experience uh, data set. So if we go to apps, since experience is an application under Cornerstone, see this is what experience looks like so if we go under example installation of experience we can download it here so right click and save link as on download to our desktop so this web page gives you the basic installation of how you would run experience and what needs to be done but if you want to read this and not watch the video then you can stop the video now otherwise let's go on so let's check our download progress. So we see that the runtime has already finished downloading. So we're going to currently install the runtime. Click yes. Next, the default location is the root of the C drive. So we'll just use the defaults and install. So we're finished, and let's go install the Cornerstone SDK. Next, next, and install. So now we're done installing. So let's also extract the experience demo uh, data. So now we have our files that we need for experience. So typically, um, experiences would be found in the bin folder, and one would want to 
double click and run this program. However, experience won't run by itself because we need to add some, some uh, special parameters and flags to do so. So for best practice, we're going to actually create a folder on the root of the C drive called experience. So experience. The reason why we want to create on the root of the C drive because it makes the customization and editing parameters easier in the long run. Additionally, it can be moved between different computers with relative ease. So now we're going to go back to our cornerstone um, folder. So we'll go to the cornerstone, the runtime folder. We'll go to a data set. And then we'll go to experience. This is where the templates and default themes are. So we're going to copy it. We'll go back to our C drive and then go to experience. And then we're going to paste it. The reason why you don't want to edit and build experience in a cornerstone install directory is so we do not corrupt the templates. Otherwise, you'll need to reinstall the program if you decide to revert or go back. So now we're going to also copy this data set to the experience folder as well. Now we're almost ready to get experience running. So now we need to create a batch file. So a batch file contains a special list of instructions to be carried out and ran in Windows command prompt. So we're going to open up Notepad. Now we need to locate where experience is at. So as you saw at the beginning, it's in the bin folder. And we're going to point to uh, this executable file. So we'll just copy this address. So we copy it down and right. And then we're going to type in experience. Dot exe and now we need to add special parameters so we need to actually point to these three folders you see here so CFG templates data and then default theme when we point to these folders we're actually going to enter flags so between each flag you need to have a space and then the flag is denoted by double dashes so for the first one we're going to do double dash theme and then space the name of the folder, so default dash theme. And then now space, double dash CFG, space capital CFG dash templates. And then finally, space double dash root and then data. Now let's save this file. So we're going to go to the save as, and then let's call it experience dot bat and then uh, let's change this to all files and then click the save button so now we have created our batch file so if we were to actually double click on this batch file we would get errors because this batch file actually needs to reside in the local folder of where your experience templates and data is going to be because we already specified that the theme and the templates and the root uh, data is going to be in this uh, location of this file. If you want to run this batch file somewhere else or outside of the data folder, of this experience folder, then you would need to actually specify the address of where the default themes, templates, and root data are at. But to make things simple, it's always just a good idea to keep your batch file in this folder. So now we're ready to run experience. So I'll double click on it. So here's experience right here. So you press Q to get out of experience. Sometimes Windows Firewall will prompt you to uh, to accept. You need to have network connection. So now we need to actually uh, touch working on our multi-touch display. So to do that, let's go edit our network settings. So we're going to go to Open Network and Sharing Center. So we're going to do our edit our network connections on a computer first, and then we're going to go to do it on a multi-touch display. So click on Local Area Connection, our LAN connection. Go to Properties, and then we're going to go to IPv4. Six is not supported right now, so we'll go to Properties, and let's give something simple. So something like your home network. So 192. 
Let's use uh, let's use Lucky Seven. Here we go. We'll use a default subnet mask. You don't need to use a gateway if you're just only running the display. But if you want to have internet access with the display, then you can set a gateway. We'll just set one for the sake of it. So dot one dot one, and we'll use a DNS as the same as the gateway. Okay, so we made we need to make note of this IP address so we don't accidentally set the IP address of the display to be the same as your computer, otherwise there'll be a conflict. Click OK and then close. And then close. So now let's go to our multitasking display. So you need to have a keyboard and mouse in order to uh, change settings on OSD. So we're on OSD right now, so let's go to setup and then we're going to go to network. So right now we need to change it to manual. Let's give it a manual uh, IP address. Let's use 192.168.1. Let's use 8 right there. Netmask it needs to be in the same region as the computer. Two dot one six eight one dot one. Close this. We're gonna hit apply. Don't hit the save button yet because it will save the last state of the display, which the last state of the display does not have an IP address. We're gonna wait till the IP address shows up right here, and then it, this text should show up. Network settings updated. Now we are ready to hit the save button. It's also a good idea to check your OSD timeout settings. So go to System, OSD, and check your timeouts. If you're wondering why uh, you can't see your external computer, you might want to check your settings because if it says zero, then OSD will never timeout. Any other value, this, these are in seconds. So OSD is automatically set to timeout after 10 seconds. So here we go. recognize my finger. So I'll automatically go back to my desktop. So just because we have uh, had the IP addresses already set up and everything, we don't have touch enabled yet. We need to actually change one last thing. So this is the config.txt file. To edit that, we need to go to the location of it. So it's under user. And then your name or your account, so this is me, JP. We're going to go to app data. I created a shortcut. By default, app data is actually hidden. Double click on it, go to roaming, and then we're going to browse to the multi touch folder. And then we see config.txt. When you run a cornerstone application, these files will be created. Otherwise, if you haven't ran a cornerstone application yet, then you can manually create it. The cornerstone website gives some details on how you would create this manually. But it's easier just to do uh, run a cornerstone application and it will create it automatically. So we're going to edit this. Let's use Notepad++. We need to edit host, so localhost. So this is just um, pointing to the computer itself, so it's not going anywhere useful. So we're actually going to point it to our display. And our display IP address that you saw is 192.168.1.8. And then we're going to hit the save button up here. So now we're ready um, to have our Cornerstone application experience have touch work. So first, let's check if our display is communicating properly with our, properly with our computer. So we're going to open up CMD, Command Prompt, and let's ping the display. So ping 192.168.1.8, center, and we hear a response back from the display. So ready to close that. Let's go back um, to our experience. So experience, and then we can run it. Double click it. And we see that experience is running perfectly fine. See? So now the last thing is if let's say we want to uh, change experience to run with our SDK that we installed. 
So let's just copy the name of this folder right here, cornerstone-sdk-2.0.6. Go back to experience. We're going to right click on this batch file and edit. And then we're going to uh, replace cornerstone with the SDK. So save. And now we can run experience again. So now it's nagging about the firewall. So just allow access. So you can see full stuff right here. There's our input visualizers just reflecting it in my hands. Let's find a marker. So we have marker code 27.85. Uh, okay, so see my marker. And we have a pen, can show, so pen. So here's our 3D model right here. So basic brochure. So yeah, that's basically running experience right there. It's pretty simple, it doesn't take too much time to do. So let's exit out of this. And the last thing I like to do is I want to create a shortcut for this. So we're going to right click on the batch file, create shortcut. And then let's move it to our desktop so we don't have to keep opening up this folder. And one more thing is to make it look official, this shortcut. Let's actually customize it. So let's go to properties. And then let's change the icon. Um, and then let's go to where uh, our experience executable is. So let's go to SDK. We'll go to bin and we'll go to experience. Click OK, apply, and cool. We have our experience shortcut right there. Let's call it um, experience. So now we have a clean setup right here. We can double click it on experience again. Wall. This is cool stuff right here. So this is how you run multi-tacking experience. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, as always, have a nice day.